BTP has started chasing us down, right? Now, what my man's done is run on the outside line. Yeah? Intercity trains come along. Yeah? He's thrown himself on the floor last minute. Yeah? This, I've seen his jacket in his jacket inside out. You can see the white jacket flapping. Yeah? I was like, oh my fucking God, I've seen a man get hit by a train. Killer Keller Official dot com. Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Alrighty, here we go again. Killer Keller Podcast live and direct. Central London or as central as you need to be, could be, should be. Heaven forbid you be anywhere else. It's bad for your health and not worth your time and pleasure. Um, what a fantastic weekend. Thanks to all the sharers and carers. People were supporting from the jump. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gknifteyheads.com and get ready for Hodder Wars Summer 2024. Keep on moving in this evergreen street culture landscape. And one gentleman, which without question has been requested God knows how many times, we finally found him. <laughs> here we found him eventually. Me, He's here. Um, I mean, he'll run off the names of the crews of all the eras and times in which we uh, celebrate. Uh, this is Zelda in the building. <laughs> Just another day in the life, right? Yeah, that's it, man. Just living the dream, mate. Eh? How you been? Yeah, all good, brother. All good, man. Fuck you, a nice sunny day today. Been yeah. Out doing my bits and pieces. Come, come on in. Yeah. Thanks for having me. No, thank you so yeah. much for passing through. Like I said, a lot of people have uh, cited you as very much the kind of character that needs to come on. It needs to be documented. Um, you're very elusive. Yeah. Yeah, well... I don't know why anyone would want me on here, to be honest. I ain't done graffiti for years, but fucking, you know, uh, it's a pleasure to be on here. You wait, the numbers will run up and, uh, yeah, we will, we will prove that the test of time knows no bounds, man. <laughs> oh, we'll see, innit? Yeah, so what are you doing nowadays? What's, what's happening nowadays? Um, I'm just living a very, like, boring lifestyle, like, to be honest with you, like a normal lifestyle, just going, doing my nine to five or eight to five, whatever. Mm. So... Oh, he's moving the light. We do have uh, a, 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 a yeah. family friend in, inside the house. Yeah, broken. Four-legged friend. Who is your confidant, to say the least? You absolutely adore. You adore him, don't you? Oh, this one here? Yeah, he's a mm. good dog. This one's uh, my ass dog. Uh, he's a good dog, man. Yeah. He's a half canny coarse old English bulldog. Uh, he's only young at the moment, two and a half, but he's well behaved. He's a good dog, as you can see. Like, he's so, he's yeah. so chilled. Lovely, and I've lovely <laughs> temperament. When I go to work, I leave him with a friend, and she's got a cat, and he looks like, like you know, they get along. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And when you tell him to sit, he sits more than some of the podcast guests. Come <laughs> yeah. on, <laughs> to be fair. Terrible, terrible. Well, we have to cut to the chase because uh, a lot of people here will know of the name and the, and the reputation that preceded you over a period of time, over a, a decent window period of time. Um, where did it all begin for you, Z? Where, where, did, where did life start in Graf? Oh, Graf-wise, it was like primary school. Um, one kid put me on, like, asked me about, oh, what's your tag and this? Uh, I used to knock about this one kid, Paul Shirley. Um, unfortunately, the guy's uh, dead now. That, but, um, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, but, yeah, in primary school, uh, that was when I started. Originally, I used to write Doc. I know there's many, many other people that have written that tag. But that was, like, my first tag and then sound. And then, like, uh, around, like, 94, I started writing Zonic. Yeah, but I wasn't really, like, dubber or piece. I just used to get, like, um, WH Smith pens, stick them in a sock, start swinging that around, juicing them up, flipping... Mm-hmm. Uh, Edin, Copic, Cure, Colour. So where did that uh, come from? Where did that, where did that, in, um, just started picking understanding up, of that come from? Just started picking up from other writers and stuff like that. You know, like, people teaching me, like, throw brake fluid and whatnot in the, in the juice and use that, you know, like, the old paint pens, Poscas, uni markers and that. Uh, I used to go, like, Baker Street all the time. I used to have, a, like, a cardboard box on the floor. I go there and just hoot. They knew what I was fucking doing. <laughs> like, I was just going in there, hoovering, hoovering, hoovering up fucking copy inks and cure colour. Um, <clears throat> Pantones, I used to go, like, Covent Garden, uh, Liverpool Street. Liverpool Street used to get, like, 
the old bunt knacks um, do its. Um, uh, but, so this is very much a solo mission of yours. Like, this, yeah, this, but it was going about making money late at night and fucking painting. <laughs> That's all I did as a kid, to be honest with you. So how old like, would you have been at that time? Oh, You'd have know. been pretty young. I'd have been young. Like, I started doing ticket machines and stuff like that when I was a kid. Um, I started like leaving home, going to stay with friends and stuff. Um, I stay in like, Croydon, and Peckham. And then when I was like 12 years old, I got nicked one day and uh, my mate from Croydon, his dad used to come pick me up and bail me out. And it was, I was told like no one wanted to come pick me up because obviously too much bullshit, you know, bringing <laughs> it to a while, random people. starts to get a bit dry, and, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, causing my fucking nuisance. And then um, I got put into care, I got put in emergency care order, interim care order, and a full care order. And that's when they started banging me up in secure units and semi secure units and maximum secure units like Ethelbert Lodge. And um, I escaped from there a few times. Uh, I can remember one time they took the kids. Like, this is, they caught me after about a week over in Baker Street with some guys I used to knock about from Woolwich. And mm. um, I got nicked. It was about a week after I'd absconded from the kids' home. This semi secure unit, right? And then uh, they're taking me back there. They took me to the secure school in the morning, took everyone else swimming, kept me back. And some guys t- turned up in a Vauxhall, uh, I think it was a Colton or a Cavalier, and they've come pick me up. Two big guys, yeah, and they stopped me in the car. And I was like, Yeah, am I going to an Oakland kids' home? And all this, so there's like, no. Yeah, 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 you're going to an Oakland kids' home. Wow, drove me out into the middle of the sticks, like some place called Copthorne in between Gatwick and Crawley. Way out and, there, um, yeah. yeah, way out. And, yeah, they stuck me uh, in a secure unit called Beachfields and then released me from there, went therapeutic kids on in Purley called Tudor Lodge. So this is, this is all underage? This is all underage kind of yeah, era, don't yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's when I started painting the trains and that. And BR, Slam Doors, Northern Lines, Golders, um, High Barnet. Uh, more than I smacked up more than uh, I done. Like, obviously, I ain't got photos to show no one, but I done like a big Zeld one piece um, on my own at the entrance of More than Yard one time on my oh. J's, like window down whole car. I remember waiting like stinking and all grubby and stinking feet and whatnot. Yeah, waiting to catch runners first thing in the morning, bait as fuck, <laughs> raising fucking uh, cameras out of W H Smith and boots, the little chuck away ones. Mm-hmm. But, uh, golden era. Golden era. Golden era. Slam shut doors. I mean, <laughs> feels like a. Oh, I used to take the piss. I used to take the piss on them. We used to like, we used to have like a little square lock, and you could just lloyd them. You could like flip the latch, uh, and fuck you, and go and sit on the back of the train, watching the rails go past, bunning ash suits. We used to get, <laughs> we used to reach round. We used to get the connecting uh, bits, the two fronts of the trains. They joined them together. Yeah, and you had like a, you had a bit you could slip round, get a hook off, go and jam it in the lock, lift it, and you could just sit in a driver's bit. And you had the train detonators, these little yellow discs. You had a flag. Like the uh, yellow detonators used to come in a tube, and we used to fuck around with them, putting them on the tracks. So the trains would go over them, bang, stop, and <laughs> you know, stupid <laughs> fucking bullshit things, you know, when you're a kid. Like. But yeah, we had a fucking laugh on the slam doors and that. Who did you used to roll with? Who who were who were the people that originally used to when jam I first with? started taking graffiti more like seriously, like when I was writing Zonic, Z I N I K. Um like that was with like Kaper, um, Isa, like just some no name guys really. And then started writing Zelda, I bumped into like Reese, Tate, Cause, all those guys, you know, used to go out yeah. there and make a little change and stuff. Uh, fuck you, and uh, yeah, and then uh, I started banging out chains. I started doing cookies and cream and that, like doing full colour pieces everywhere. And fucking South Woodford, Farringdon, like Farringdon used to absurd into there, climb over the fence, but that's all gone now. Farringdon Yard, um, uh, loads of yards I've done really. I used to live next to one when I was living in Harlesden. Oh, the then there, there comes trouble. Old Oak, old Oak Common Lane. And yeah. I used to go in there. I remember one time I broke into the chain. It was all out of date. 
Yeah, but I found a whole carriage full of fucking Stella. What? Uh, Stella cans everywhere. I've gone to his site. It was some mad train. It had a fucking shower and everything in it. Uh, and it was right next to my yard. I used to live in Old Oak Common Lane. And what it was is those blocks were like old railway workers' blocks but being converted. I think I was with uh, PCHA, Paddington Church's housing at the time. Right. And um, yeah, it stuck me in there. And yeah, those times I bumped into some guy. The guy used to take like class A's and that. Right. But I was going out there and I was racking. But he showed me a next way of racking that up. When I grew up, I was a commercial guy. I used to do like petrol stations and offices. And like when I was 12, for instance, what was it? Like 128 megabytes, I could get 150 pounds for. Yeah, whereas like a terabyte, you can buy for 60 quid now. If you broke into an office and got a Cisco board or a SunDrive Microsystems and that, you're getting fucking paid yeah, <laughs> because yeah, they're yeah. worth like 37 grand back in the 90s. You think about it, technology now, it's, it's come a long, uh, it's come a long way. Like now you could buy like a terabyte, probably not even 60 quid for like 40 quid or something. Like, yeah, like Back done. in the day, it's like 40 fucking bags. But yeah, and then um, anyway, with this guy, this guy Liam, yeah, uh, used to start making ban magic bags. Uh, and that was a little lick, like it's only a tiny little move. I used to go out there a few heads and stuff, you know, like a lot of North Northwest writers, mm -hmm. um, LGL guys, TK guys, WMB guys, uh, DDS and that. And we used to do like magic bags and all sorts, you know, get the fucking go out there, really. That's fucking mad. I'll tell you what, I used to smack up as well with Queen's Park. I smashed Queen's Park south and north side. <laughs> I can't even show no no photos. Because you ain't so. got any no more, have you? No, no, no. I got fucking jerked. Got jerked by BTV. I don't know if I said, did I say I got caught bombing? No. No, I didn't, didn't, didn't mention it. No, fucking, um, I got caught bombing at um, Kensett Olympia Station. Um, BTP grabbed me. I was with some writer 94. Like, just no name guy, but like, you know, but a lot of people used to see him around West. He was a bomber. Yeah, and uh, we got caught at Kensett Olympia. Denied it all because I've launched a blammer and it's not on fucking smudges or nothing, mm. so I'm nice. And the BTP had taken me to Hammersmith Police Station. Uh, I'm denying everything uh, and they've gone to my fucking... And it was when I was in Old Oak Common Lane mm -hmm. yeah, and they took sucked me for fucking three photo albums. There's about 700 photos there. Fuck. I was pissed off. I was pissed. Oh, yeah. And they, they were all like old tubes from a White City. I don't know, a fucking burner in White City. <laughs> and I, I actually, I've, I've probably still got a dub in the fucking tunnels. Just before you come in the tunnels, there used to be a Cosa and a Rumor dub. Remember, the intel but, on this is crazy. It's almost like, yeah, but just another a, day, you know what I mean? A Cosa and a Rumor dub there and fucking, then I, I put like a Zelda dub there on the corner that like, when you come out of tunnels. Like, I used to bang out White City. Me and 94 and fucking, uh, they gripped up 94 one time actually. They come in with fucking dogs, locked the lines off and gripped him up. Really? Yeah. Jesus. Man, you've got stories for days. Does this, you know, talking about this, does this run up some nostalgia where you think to yourself, oh, you know, like, you know, I could always get back on on the horse, so to speak. No, I'm an old kid, man. As I said, I'm 42 <laughs> next week. I've got fucking the people who depend on me and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, like, my old man, I know it sounds a bit fucking nonsense, but my mum passed a couple of years ago. And Rest in my, peace. Us, to my old man, like, I made him promise, you know, don't go into the bin no more and that, you know, that fucking, because yeah. I've been in and out 64 times. 64 since, times? Since I was 13. And that's oh, a wow. job. That's a job. You know, like, what you. drove you to, you know, to to go to that length? What uh, was it? What was, what was life, going on? living, you know, fucking mm. circumstance. Like, um, a lot of the time I was paying rent and I couldn't get like, this and that off the of government, so I just went out there and just made... I was living in um, a hostel, uh, Pound Lane, over in Wilsdon, and um, me and Rees were live, living over there at the time. Uh, big up Rees, by the way. Big up Rees, TDL. Yeah, all day. Brother Rees. Yeah. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. 
Them times, I wasn't getting no housing benefit or nothing. I was paying £189 out of my pocket every, uh, what was it, we every week? Yes, yeah, right. weekly. This is the old pound name before they changed the building. Uh, this has been like oh three or four something like that, mm -hmm. and I, I was going out and I was telling you about the magics, mm -hmm. uh, the magic bags. This guy showed me about, like, and uh, basically you get like uh, I think it was PS two games, and we was getting like twenty four quid for the latest ones. So you just got to fill up the bag and get four hundred pound a day. Me, I don't take drugs. So I used to smoke a bit of herb and juice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some fucking. Uh, yeah, that's nice for me. I was going out buying nice clothes, exclusive clothes for my son. Um, my, and, uh, yeah, that was it, you know. Like, I was living a free life, to be honest. Someone actually said to me, they goes, yeah, you, you live a free life. <laughs> now I'm paying for it, you know, like I'm a fucking uh, normal bud. You walk past <laughs> me in the street, wouldn't even fucking recognise me. Yeah, um, yeah you're proper low-key. Yeah. you like... You wouldn't think that you know that 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 lifestyle was even would be even in you. I mean, it's all about progression in life, and I started that way when I was like fucking eight years old, going out getting nicked for fucking stealing and stuff, and um, I started getting nicked for fucking uh, weapons like bladed articles, knuckle duster, um, and then firearms. Being arrested for I've done forty nine and a half months for um, converted three eight spinner. And, wow. Um, uh, I got dragged into a case. I proved my innocence for a sawn off 12 gauge. And that was um, 2016, May, May 20th till July 22. I was basically somehow my name's come into a case and a uh, judge has passed it as insubmissible evidence because it doesn't come from a witness or um, from a police officer. So that I got um, a dismissal case on that. Mm. And then uh, I got done a couple of other times after that. Um, I went to jail for about a quarter of a million pounds worth of commercial burglaries, like phone shops and that. I was just pulling up um, on in cars, bikes, ripping up shutters, booming a window, going and clearing. And um, I was doing them all in one area like a fucking idiot. And Collindale Police shifted me in 2000, it was Thursday the 12th. 2018, Friday the 13th, I was in uh, Scrubs, and that's for commercial burglaries. And then um, I went away for 41 and a half grand worth of F fraud, where I was wow. just doing nationwide. And then that was the last time I was in the bin. I've been in the bin for about four years now. And it's been like a big period for me. And mm. so I've managed to progress in my trade and stuff. And um, getting paid nice, getting nice tax rebates, stuff like that, you know. Just we like all that. That's you know, the kind of thing rebates. we like in life, right? Yeah, when you're getting £7,200 just given to you like, every fucking year. Yeah. Yeah, it's not much, but fucking... No, but it's yeah, no complaints, like, is there, you know? Yeah. Doing, doing the right April, thing. Like, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The, um, yeah. The, the, this conversation is... It's so far removed from graph, but then at the same oh, time. Sorry, man. Let's get no, back no, no, onto no. The no, 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 not get at all. The no, because the, the point I was I was going to raise was actually it is one in the same. It's... It was years ago. Now it's not. I, I, don't, oh, I don't know anyway because I don't do graffiti. I don't know the scene. Uh, last piece of dub, I think it's like a gold dub I done at Finchley Road. Come and move away from there. I done it at Finchley Road, yeah, and I don't even know if that's still there. That's 2016, so that's like eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't really tell you who's who and what's not fucking nowadays. Really, so you're properly on. removed. You don't. You, you don't I'll watch chat it to on. some people and that, you know, like, but. It's, so fucking busy nowadays not enough hours in a day yeah like doing other things you know like even i was supposed to be a, like a certain time i come fucking two hours late you know <laughs> and that was just people just wanting me to go here there you know fucking life stuff yeah life stuff in it yeah i find it interesting how no matter you know the, the seasoned graph writer they'll they'll find a way and i don't know it's like dual lives how how do you keep up with that repetition and still be able to retain like a normal steady life? It's it's impossible, isn't it? You could, you could. I, I met certain writers, yeah, top top writers and that. Fucking um, and they're like got nice paid jobs. There was a certain man who got nicked for a load of like chains and whatnot. Yeah. yeah and I've read in the paper the guy was a quantity surveyor, 
No, that's like a hundred and twenty fucking grand a year job. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, there's all sorts of people. Graffiti is like a form of art. When I started it, it wasn't for me. It was oh, at first it was about a vandalism when I was a little little kid. Yeah. And then when I started getting into it, it was more about this is what I can show people. Yeah, like I can show people my pieces like, and people mm. will see these things, you know, so they've got to be fucking on point. Mm. Yeah, I can't just throw up any old bullshit on the fucking wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, uh, <coughs> learning how to mix paints, you know, like I used to do infills with bunt lacks and do it, and then I'd use like high coats mm -hmm. for like detail and, and borders. <coughs> Excuse me. No, you're cool. You're cool. Get it off your chest, then. Yeah, get it off your chest. This is what the yeah. podcast is all for. <laughs> yeah, that's it, mate. That's what we're here for today. But it is curious that people will go to that extreme and not actually recognise how down the rabbit hole they are. 128 you know, grand job a year, and, <laughs> and then they get themselves into this... Into the booted, booted off, uh, into the fucking bin and that. Quite scary, isn't and it? And their faces all over the fucking TV. I've, I've been in papers and local papers and BBC. I've had fucking Trevor McDonald talking shit about me on the fucking really? TV, saying that I robbed someone. I turned up fucking eight minutes after the robbery had happened, but I ended up fucking getting me... And another, well, another writer, uh, it's up to him, you know, I'm not going to mention his name. Me and him ended up fucking getting out. Uh, he got three and a half years, I got three years. I got recalled and I got recalled under the old uh, like regime sort of thing. This is in 2008, so I ended up doing the whole three-year sentence without committing a crime. But basically, probation said, look, um, we're concerned about how this guy's making money because he doesn't sign on at job centres. Mm. So... They recalled me on that, and because they didn't know I was living, I was a PPO and a mapper at the time, and they were supposed to rehouse me by law. We fucking didn't. I went to stay with some chick down in Harsden. Mm. I'm walking out of her yard one day. They've come, jumped me, and it, I was on on a fucking Saturday. I was the only man in reception, uh, sitting in scrubs, yeah, and I got recalled for the rest of the fucking sentence. That. You know, that fuck it. But the thing is, if you walk down certain roads, I remember we said earlier, if you're a nice person, you know, like not all the time nice things happen. Mm. But if you're a bad person, you go looking for fucking shit, shit's going to come on your fucking plate, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it'll keep so, on perpetuating. You'll constantly yeah, have these things. If you walk down bad roads, fucking, that's what we're going to see, bad things, isn't it? Yeah. You know? It's funny you say that because, it, you know, on the podcast we've had a variety of um, characters and... You can almost sense that energy in a person, knowing that they perhaps they they are going down the wrong road anyway. Yeah, yeah. Would you say that was a that that was a scenario for you? clearly that was a scenario for you? How did you I get was out an, that? I was an impressionable kid, yeah, and I was young. Like, I've been doing shit from before I even hit fucking puberty. Yeah. So um, like lashing cars, black boxing, and stuff like that, you know. Um, Lloyd in and fucking Slim Jims and tension bars, you know, things that people wouldn't even understand. Half the people, wouldn't yeah, you'll have to Google that. The, you'll have to Google that one. Fucking, um, yeah, all those things I was doing from early doors. Um, but you know, like I was offered chances along the way. I was in a kid's home in Brixton for a little while, and um, for instance, they was giving me lunch money. But the thing is, I used to get sucked from my fucking dough every week. Because I used to stay out past 12 o'clock and they used to use the pocket that. Uh, those are things I'm supposed to have, they pocketed. Why, they why, is, that, why is that after a certain time? Because it's like they're thieving cunts in fucking children's homes. Yeah, like, you know, you. back in the day, yeah, these yeah. things weren't monitored. I've had fucking, I was, same children's home. I had some woman tell me I've, I've got kicked out of one part, yeah, because right, I've seen some chick. And a member of staff slapped her. I've fucking gone mad at the member of staff, got restrained, and they've moved me to another part, an independent part of the children's home. I was too young to be there at the time. I was 14. I wasn't supposed to be on that part. But they let, used to let me come and do my clothes, like washing and whatnot. Mm. And these times I used to clap it out, yeah? Like, fuck it, I was just dressed in mosh, crazy mosh, Versace V2s, a Berg, <laughs> fucking everything, yeah? Like, I was big into clothes back then when I was a kid. And, um... She's seen my clothes. I think it's some Ralph shirts, a couple of a uh, couple of fucking um, Imperial Armani jeans, and she's like, "Oh, they're nice clothes. My son would look nice in those." <laughs> uh, imagine staff are the only people who have access to your room. Now I come back, my room's still locked. Go in my room, said fucking clothes suck straight away. I left them out. Now, these things are regular occurrences in children's homes. You know, as I said, they used to take my fucking yeah. money all the time. 
But they used to give you travel money and I used to go and spend it on fucking snouts and cigarettes. So yeah, uh, so I had opportunities to go to school. Um, like I was in this therapeutic school in um, Purley and it's from the kids, the therapeutic kids home. They used to send me some fucking church, me and one other kid. And one day we kidnapped the fucking tutor, didn't we? Uh, we broke what? over it. He had a Pierre Cardin briefcase. We opened up his briefcase. They had darts and all that in there. So we started throwing darts at the fucking roof. That Oh, man. Yeah. I had opportunities, but I was just a stupid, stupid, stupid fucking kid when I was younger. And I was too hyped up and, you know, like... Yeah, oh. he used to do some bullshit. This is so... And I think that's what part and parcel with the graffiti for me at the time was breaking into fucking tube yards at, one, at fucking three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, scoping, three o'clock you're painting. You know, uh, certain places, like, you can do different times and all that. You know, that like, it's just mad. Like, I used to love the colours with graffiti as well. Mm. You know, um, I can remember that. There's one right at Dre. Uh, Dre, big up Dre. Dre, CD, GLP, yeah. yeah, like fucking, he was official back then. I remember those times, he used to call me a toy because I used to use like fucking plastic coats to raise stuff like that, you know, going to B&Qs and all that. And then obviously, I found out later about rubber ducks, you know. Um, oh, I found, that's a game changer right there. Yeah, those were a game changer, rubber ducks, like for chrome, chrome dubs and that. Yeah. Um, I used to have a plot in Soho. And then what they did is they moved the fucking cans all the way to the back of the store. So now, like, you have to ask them, like, I mean, that's if the store's even still fucking there. Like. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah, and then it's just hunting down the right paint, you know. I've used car plans, special effects. Um, I can remember someone giving me a load of fucking Montana for my birthday one time. Beltons. I used to have a spot for Beltons. I think it was Take or someone like that who showed me, or Reese. And it was a spot in Archway, and I used to go there with a razor blade because they used to put the plastic sheet in, um, polyurethane sheet in over the fucking cans there, and it was a car shop. And again, I don't know if that fucking place is there still, but they used to have Auto K and Belton. I used to go stripe the fucking um, plastic and start hoovering, hoovering up the cans. But yeah, that was a banging paint what I used to use, the old Belton's. How did, uh, how, because now we're talking in style techniques and colours and such, because obviously you had the extracurricular of whatever you were going through in life, yeah. but how, how important was, you know, style getting up? The style was really important back then. Like, you had throw-ups, but the throw-ups were, you know, sick throw-ups, you know. Like, I remember I used to see iron throw-ups all the way through Central. You see Mace, uh, yeah. RCS. Yeah. Um, these times, I was, I was the most up in Central. If you look at there's a computer game called The Getaway, yeah, and The Getaway Black Monday, and if you go and play that game or see stills from there, I'm the most up on that. Outlines in Soho, because I was living in Soho at the time when that happened, um, Diadem Court. I've lived all over Soho, Covent Garden, Holborn. Have you? You lived all around there? Yeah, yeah. Really? Uh, Diadem Court, uh, bottom end of Dean Street, when McDonald's used to be on Dean Street. Um, uh, fucking uh, Creek Street, um, and then Holborn. I've lived like uh, Endell Street, um, uh, New Oxford Street, St George's Court. I've lived I grew up around there, man. In the late nineties, that's when I used to do Farringdon and stuff. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. climbing to there when they had the fucking scaffolding in there. But um, yeah, I bumped into a few people. I painted at Whitechapel and stuff. And I remember an old school rat crime. Um, R.I.P. Crime. Yeah, rest in peace, Lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely guy, Justin Crime. Yeah. Um, me, Crime, Range, 143. He, he got banged up because he'd done someone's yard with someone else um, when he was on crutches, right, and fucking got nicked for it. And um, we'd done a yard just before he went away. It's the last time I fucking see him. And um, so I used to chat to them, BT, go check for them all the fucking time and that uh, for a little bit before I met the mother of my oldest. And, um, and uh, we went to New Cross Yard, and I remember we had Range was on a tizzy on the phone mm -hmm. um, in the blocks. Yeah, and this is when they started up that East London line, and he was using big Met trains. Yeah. And me and him painted, and I think 143 looked out for us. 143 and Range were lookouts, and me and him was painting, and that, I don't know, like a Zelda BTA or something, I think. Like those guys were tough though, man. Like shoe, shoes, fucking heavy, right up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Who, you, who can I say is heavyweight? I'll tell you who he is. Uh, and no one chats about him. It's Spo. Spo's got some yeah. sick fucking style. Serious writer. Uh, key, key CD. Like, those people there. Key uh, CD, one of the originals. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's tough, but it's not not got the edge like Key, man. These yeah, mean yeah. letters and that, like, oh, fuck you, and uh, when I was growing up, like, <clears throat> obviously I was mainly South and Central originally, and it's like around Loughborough and Norwood and fucking Norbury and around those areas. And later I moved into like Solo and Covent Garden, Holborn, and um, leave. And uh, I'm going with this. Fucking hell. Man, Side you've track. been everywhere. That's like. Your all city just didn't. Yeah, like, no, I was gonna go. Yeah, it thing. was. It was people. That's what I was going on with. Fucking um, in South, like I remember originally it was guys coming, the city or something. Mm -hmm. but fucking uh, yeah, um, people originally like remember seeing like known, and Chuck Chuck one hundred and one Chuck one hundred and one used to have heavy throbs. Known used to do like that the aliens mm -hmm. and that the wild styles. Yeah, known, um, zoned. Zone cons wow. uh, FDC. You 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 moved about with all these different crews. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've fucking been about to be honest with you. Yeah, I've been about. Some people I'd love to see again. I'd love to get contact with again. Yeah, who do you want to see again? Who who? Oh, there's a lot of people, man. There's a lot of people. A lot of people. Lot do you miss that camaraderie? Um. Uh, I've lived it to be honest with you. I'm fucking. Um, sometimes I used to wake up in the morning and I'd be like, fucking hell, like, where am I going to go today? Like, and fucking do this, that, and the other, in it. Yeah. You know, like the planning of fucking where you're going to go hit out there and stuff. Um, that was a headache sometimes. But fucking, you just want to chill out, but you've got to go fucking do this, that, and the other. So it's like a call in, you just got to go and do it because yeah. you got the, you got the heads up. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you fucking laugh. You need food, clothing, and shelter, innit? You got to pay your rent and stuff like that. So you have to go out there, innit? Fucking rent ain't cheap nowadays. Right. You know what this story reminds me of the um, the Me Rock uh, podcast I did. You know he. Oh, Sharon Stone. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, Sharon, yeah. He. Uh, yeah, no. I think. I, I think. That guy, man. He's a lovely guy. Yeah, man. he's lovely. Yeah, and but yeah, still working within the. Uh, boundaries of what he's used to and you know yeah the thing is life's about progression i've turned many pages in this life like originally i was, not, uh, like, when I was a kid done a bit of fucking shoplifting and then i jumped on the commercials with a lot of guys from bermondsey and southwark around there mm -hmm. and we sort of hit up fucking black friars all around there um like all the offices and stuff i was telling you about the sim days mm -hmm. uh, like, with the cisco and all that and um Fucking, uh, yeah, and then like, I kind of left them boys and started getting into fucking old shoplifting again, but more in a professional sense. And then got back into commercials and then fucking other things and that, you know. Fucking, uh, yeah, now nah, I just live some fucking normal bod lifestyle, to be honest with you. I just go fucking work. Does enjoy it feel, my work. Does it but, feel better? Does it feel better? Um, fucking. I don't know, the things are all set out now, right? So fucking I don't have to worry about where's my fucking rent coming from and stuff like that and bills and shit. Yeah. You know, like um yeah, like I'm sometimes too run down. Yeah, I've got private uh, projects going on, I've got fucking industrial projects going on, I'm trying to find people to do work as well. If there's anyone who's skilled out there, I've got fucking work for you. Mm. Um, you know, so like yeah, I do miss a little bit of that old spark now and again. Like, fucking, uh, going out painting a train, right? Fuck it, that would be mad to do that. Uh, I'd enjoy doing that, but when I've got the fucking hours in a day, to be honest with you. Is this Buddha, Buddha? Yeah, Buddha, yeah. Okay, so yeah, he's yeah. free now, yeah? Yeah, 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 he's freed out. Yeah, both pies as well. Yeah, vods. I mean, these are all your contemporaries, aren't they? Yeah, of what's I shared a cell of what's um, years ago. I think we used to chat to fucking about, uh, yeah. about. Yeah, I used to ring. I used to let fucking vods use my tizzy and that. I used to have like a blue screen Motorola. We was in Wandsworth at the time, and fucking um, yeah, I used to chat to that about and take and that. It was 
seen that stole shit like that, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah, Vods is a good guy, man. Yeah, lovely yeah, guy, he's lovely sound, guy. He's yeah. well, you've had him on here, yeah? yeah so he must have, because he yeah. got his fucking reach up here. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, anyone that's got a reach on here has been in. That's the, that's the fact. Um, tell us some stories. Tell us some classic get away by the, you know, the stroke of luck kind of um, stories. Oh, there was one time there's a guy called Harsh. Yeah, he's not alive no more, unfortunately. Rest, Rest in peace. In peace. Yeah, Rest and, um, in peace. We was out with uh, Tox. You must have yeah, seen course. Tox and his sick wild yeah, stars. Yeah, big up Tox. Come on. <laughs> lovely bloke as well. Another <laughs> lovely is, guy. He is. Yeah. He's, a, he's a lovely, lovely guy. Uh, me, Tox, fucking Iran. And this is when I was living over at Old Oak Common, but we've gone to hit the Wilson Junction yard. Uh, just some fucking silver link chains. Like, silver link don't exist no more, but fucking the uh, purple and green mm, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. yellow doors. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, fucking BTP has started chasing us down, right? Now, what my man's done is run on the outside line. Yeah, intercity trains come along. Yeah, he's thrown himself on the floor last minute. Yeah, it's, I've seen his jacket in his jacket inside out. You can see the white jacket flapping. Yeah, I was like, oh my fucking god! I've seen a man get hit by a train. Yeah, and they come super quick, hyper quick. The train's gone, yeah, and then everyone stopped. BTP stopped. We've all stopped. Yeah. My man's jumped up and started running again. I was like, <laughs> fuck! <laughs> that was crazy. And Tox wasn't there. I think Tox got too fucking drunk and fucking ended up yakking up or whatnot. Fuck it. There was a few of us out that day, but yeah, me, Iran, and fucking uh, harsh. God rest his soul, man. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, these near-death experiences, they do they haunt you? Those sorts of things haunt you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had one time in Finsbury Park with me and k -pop. These times I've just met Reese and, and um, fucking... <clears throat> but I was walking towards a tunnel yeah, and it was a diesel train. So I didn't hear nothing, like, and this just come zooming towards me. I threw myself in a fucking bush, like, last minute. Yeah, and it was a stinging nettle bush as well, so I couldn't get out of it. I had to get my fucking power to drag me out of the fucking bush. Oh, but, oh I shout for get me out of fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've had enough, let me go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah, I've had a few, few things, like, a few, like, things. That's mainly on motorbikes and that, though, but fucking... Graffiti, I've had a few where I've got away. Yeah, um, oh, I remember I was out there one time, I was out there one time, and I was uh, out there with a couple of guys, and we'd gone into Argos, and I'd worked out how to get into their jewellery uh, displays and that. And I've got what? into the jewellery display, I've taken three trays of rings and that, and diamond rings, uh, thrown them in a bag, obviously, like, you know, shop watch and all that have seen me. Yeah. Uh, followed me and the guys, yeah, and we've gone to fucking um, uh, we've gone to to the station. So like all the way down the bottom, I had some cheese on me at the time, so I strapped up some cheese, and fucking uh, blowing it. Trains come along, gone to get on a train. I've seen the fucking there was a security staff and some old fat police officer, and they grabbed my pals. I run on the train, thrown the fucking bags under the seat. And they left my pals and come and grabbed me. They'd taken me off, found the bags, sat me down, uh, searched me, found like a few few zoots of cheese on me, took that off of me, gave me everything back, handcuffed me. And I, we were walking out. I said, I've given them some good name. And it's like, we don't believe who you are. And you've got this and that. You need to come to the police station. Um, I said, look, I'm really nervous. Can I smoke a cigarette? I've never been in this situation before. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I have yeah, many, yeah. many times, but <laughs> my man doesn't know this. I'll give him some fuckery name there. And fucking, he's taking the cuffs off. No, he said, like, yeah, you can have a cigarette. I'll take the cuffs off. I wasn't even expecting him to take the cuffs off. Yeah, I've got the rucksack on me. Yeah, I've got everything on me apart from the weed. He's got my weed. Yeah, he walked down the, plat the platform and he had like an overpass uh, at this train station. Yeah, and they're taking a couple of... The security's gone running up to go see the van's there for him. This police officer's walked in front of me. I'm next to the tracks now. I've just ducked on the tracks up the other platform. There's some traveller family at the other end of the platform. There's like, oh, go on, see you, I've just ducked and I've got everything on me. 
I've gone in like one side of the tracks, another side of the tracks, there's fucking thorns everywhere. I'm pulling myself through trees, gone over a fence, run into a fucking field, yeah, and then like uh, I've run my pal. Yeah, and they've gone on a southbound train now, right? And they've told me, like, look, we're going to get back on a train, come pick you up, rah, rah, rah. And fucking... Because I was out there, I was in a stick somewhere, mm. yeah. And I've gone back to the uh, train station, like, just parked off. Yeah, and then trains pulled in, jumped on that train, fucking gone. And then straight to Hatton's, cashed that in, like, a certain jewellers, and that was it. Wow. Yeah. Wow, soldier moves. Some fucking commando shit. Yeah. But the graffiti was like that as well. Like I've been fucking chased. I can't even remember off the top of my head. I've been chased out of train yards and that. I remember there was some guy, uh, Gusto FDC. Yeah, big up Gusto. I'm, I'm fucking. Um, me and him were painting at Golders, and it was a four car layup, and they come flying. No, it wasn't Gusto. It was Lids. Some some other guy, not many people remember that. And by the way, there's some names that are dropping on this episode that, you know what I mean, like, that. you're conjuring back some amazing memories here. Yeah, man. Lids. Yeah. Lids, Lids and curfew and that. And um, anyway, me and Lids were in Golders Green and fucking BTP, or someone's come in, I can't remember, it might have been track staff, I can't even fucking remember now. I've splurted up the fucking bank. He said, like, a teach reach in a box and fucking some metal fucking ladder and bang, I've gone round into the state onto fucking North End Road. And my man ended up fucking hiding under trains and all that, but he got away. He wow. said, I got away as well. But, but he got away as well, so, yeah, it was all happy days. That's mad. I got caught in um, Bedford Yard, lived in Bedford for about three years, so I went up there in 2000 and then left in 2003 and split up with my baby mum and come back to central London. And um, I got caught in a Bedford yard with her cousin, right, fucking, and me and her in the yard, and fucking done a piece, and then they just caught us in there, and fucking, yeah. That was the only time I got caught in a yard, and I think that's when it, that's when it came on top for me for the graffiti, really. Um, I got arrested, and what they did is they said, look, if you TIC a load of things, yeah, all right, then what we do is just take it into consideration. Yeah, but I'd done it without a slizzer there, and that was a big mistake. They said, just don't bother the slizzer. Just, we'll TIC this shit, you're cool. And we'll let you see your missus in the police station. She'd come through with some yoghurt and some ash in the yoghurt and that. And fucking... What they done is 189 TICs, but they turned around and charged me with 13 charges because my slizzle wasn't there, so they took the fucking piss, really. Right. And then, obviously, they started coming on to me more for graffiti and that. Um, I ended up getting an ASBO. I ended up doing nine years at the ASBO. Originally, it was a criminal ASBO. Nine years? Yeah. Hey, he's fucking around. <laughs> All right, fucking, um, yeah. I got an ASBO... I can't remember what it was fucking for. I think I may even got the same time as Reese, actually. Yeah, it was. It was a fucking Hendon train station or something, and Cricklewood. And I got given a four-year ASBO, I think, originally, or it could have been a five-year one. Fucking hell, and that five was, years. And that was a criminal one where I wasn't yeah. allowed to hold unset paint, marker ink, uh, window etch, um, fucking stones, spark plugs, whatever, anything to do with graffiti. He wasn't allowed to aid a bit, tutor or consult with anyone to do graffiti. He wasn't allowed into train depots. Um, and when I went to the train station, I was supposed to tell them that I'm travelling from A to B. And um, basically, uh, Brent Council tried to extend that. I was in, I was in for the firearm thing, and um, I'd done about 49 and a half months. And they... Brent Council come to me and try to take me to Harrow Crown because that's where I received um, the ASBO from. Mm. No, I think it was Brent Magistrates, but they sent it to Harrow Crown to oh, like, try and extend it as a civil ASBO. So instead of anywhere in England and Wales, it was only inside the M25. Right. Yeah, and it was a civil ASBO. I ended up breaching it once, but because it was a civil ASBO, yeah, they couldn't. They couldn't take me like to prison for it. I couldn't get a custodial. I could get a fine or something like that. Right. Yeah. So it was a, that was a changer, right? And then they tried. No, it was extended. Yeah, because I breached it. Sorry. And then when I was in for the firearms, Harold, um, 
Brent Council tried to extend it even further after the nine years of an as well, I was on Asbol for nine years. He tried to extend it further, and I was like, uh, and uh, it got thrown out because I hadn't breached it that many times so I hadn't done mm. anything for years and so how old yeah. were you at that time like, what was your age when that what well, um, when I got that as well yeah. I think it was in 2004 and then 2013 they tried to extend it even further right so yeah, me and Reese got it in 2004 I think I might be wrong it might have been 2005 no that correlates yeah that correlates it might have been 2005 yeah I can't remember but that was kind of like hey, you know what I'm going to park this up no, because I still carried on for a little bit after that. It was when I come out for the firearms, I'd done like a couple of pieces and some dubs, and I was like, you know what, this ain't for me. That, yeah, you know that, just kind of run its scene. How do you um? Because that is a pretty harsh like line in the sand. They're telling you you can't have that sort of these sort of things in on your person. That must um, have been one hell of a reality check. I of mean, you. there's times where. I went to jail for four months uh, just because I had a can of underbody seal on me and I tried to fight it out and say, look, it's bitumen, it's not paint, it's not unset paint, it's bitumen, yeah, and I'm using it for the underside of my car. Me and Vent got caught on fucking uh, Bronsby Road in Kilburn. Kilburn, oh, I think it was bombing and we didn't get seen bombing, but someone must have called police, please turned up. Didn't catch us bombing, didn't catch us with no paint on our hands because wearing gloves and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And fucking, um, because I had the paint, because I had the Asbo, well, I ended up getting four months just for a fucking can of paint. Wow. It's so stupid, yeah, like, yeah. wasting fucking four months. Well, obviously, when you go bin, you still do this and that. Yeah, I'm still making money, but fucking, um, yeah. But... Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Well, you can be forgiven for like not wanting to kind of get too much involved anymore. I mean, it's uh, it sounds to me like uh, trouble ensued at every juncture, and and after a while, it's like, well, is it fucking worth it? Oh, well, I mean, first time, um, first time I actually got found out for the tag Zelda uh, was ninety five, no, ninety seven. I was 15, I was getting sent to Fulton, yeah. I was received my three-year sentence. And fucking, um, uh, there was a police officer um, called Sp uh, and fucking, he was actually a cool guy. Yeah. And I shouldn't have mentioned his name because he let me off on something, you know, like fucking, it wasn't to do graffiti. Like, this guy actually, he's not a BTP no more. And someone got punched up. We got chased. Yeah, the guy realised who I was. He heard, he heard my name, and that uh, fucking like he's like, bro, oh, Zelda. And he's like, no, no, it's, this isn't the guy. This isn't the guy. Whoa. All that fucking. Wow. I was with someone else as well. Touched with that like, fucking. He's like, no, no, not these guys. <laughs> so, wow. But he was a he was a lovely, lovely guy. I think what happened is he got too seriously involved in graffiti. He actually started to love graffiti. This was a guy. Uh, like mm. fucking, he was a good guy, man. Like, you know, like fucking, he let me off with things, and you know, like it was cool. There were some people who were arseholes and that, like. But I'll tell you what, that police officer there, I think he fell in love with graffiti and didn't see it as a crime, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know? you get the, you get these, you know, isolated um, lone yeah. wolves of people that, yeah. that that genuinely like the scene. And, man, can you imagine, like, in 2024, whenever you're watching the programme, you know, these are past experiences. We can talk about this because he's been tried for all of his crimes, which is amazing. Um, how far Graf has come in in this day and age? It's almost like a, the folklore of these stories, you know. Yeah. It, it'll soon become obsolete, wouldn't you say? I don't know, man. Culture's changing, isn't it? Um, culture's become, like, it's... It's funny because you've got that previous culture, the fucking grime, the sweat, the fucking nick cars, the fucking this, the that breaking into the fucking train depots, the fucking bolt cutters, the fucking all this shit. Yeah. And obviously kids nowadays, they ain't got that. Um, these phones and mm. a lot of them are programmed, unfortunately, that and I can see like the way of the world. 
it's like a new Bible is a TV screen. It's hypocritical because we're talking about these old things. We're talking about them on TV, but now yeah, everyone's yeah. all sucked into the screen and that, you know, that yeah. it's, uh, food culture's changing, that, you know, that things are changing. Like the things that I used to do, that like, used to drive through West End in fucking Nick cars, like standard plates, what I fucking lashed it in. Yeah, and like a little kid, yeah, and never, no one's uh, battering an eyelid. <laughs> now, if you used to drive through central London and you haven't paid your fucking MLT, you've got parking fines, they're swarming you, like, yeah, they're getting on swarmed. It. ULEZ and things like that. ULEZ, you're getting fucking ducked down for that, man. Uh, so things are different nowadays, like, it's crazy. Since, like, 2000, I think things started changing and that, mm. like, the 90s were, like, a different time. Like, a different era, yeah. 90s and the 80s and that. Yeah. Do you miss it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wouldn't mind crazy. jumping in a time machine and going back to fucking, you know, 96 or something yeah. like that, or 95 or something, you know, just walking down the road, just seeing everything. I was chatting to some people about gentrification, and I remember Shoreditch and London Fields and those areas mm. when I was a kid. So I've still got an old Zelda reach, actually, and it's like Allgate or some... Oh, where is it? It's somewhere. But anyway, all around there, like Shoreditch, for example, I go down there, you just see chipboard. Yeah. Every, everything's yeah. all boarded off. You run a shop, fucking forget going there, yeah. Mm. Like, everything's derelict and that, yeah. Now it's all coffee shops and trendy, you know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's good, though, because it invites, like, better things. Because there's certain times I was sitting in fucking prison cells and I thought, like, this this isn't life, this is fucking hell, mm-hmm. yeah. Right, now, like, when there's opportunities and stuff, right, I suppose things are better for kids nowadays, mm. you know, there's a lot of opportunity. But you just got to watch out because uh, I've noticed things like, for instance... Uh, them trying to advertise wages and so I'm a self-employed man. Like I, I set my own rules and stuff, you know. Mm. Like, but um, I noticed like uh, in the paper, like someone pointed out to me and it's like, oh, look, these wages. Yeah. Like, um, for example, a carpenter and it's trying to advertise like seventeen, eighteen pounds. I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> what sort of carpenter are you gonna get for that? Like, you know, and and it's like kind of grooming sort of thing. You got. Like uh, money, money's coming down, sort of thing. I don't know. Yeah, more opportunity, but I think they're just the thing is that there's more of a class thing. There's like more fucking working class. You can't yeah, afford. Thing, you yeah. can't afford a fucking house, mate. You yeah. have to fucking rent. You have to do this. Uh, so, so any regrets? Anything you would want to right the wrongs of? Now on reflection. Um, there's been times where I've got fucking too mashed up and I've done things like I've fucking jerked people, stabbed people and stuff. There's, I mean, even one time I come out of Brixton and this is when Brixton used to be a local nick, not um like a Cat C D, whatever it is now. It was just a local holding jail. Mm-hmm. And so I've gone to someone's yard and it's a good friend of mine I've grown up with since like, before I even hit double digits. And he was selling weed, and I said to him, like, but you got a jewel for me? And he's like, oh, no, 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 like, fuck, I need all this. Well, right. I said, all right, take me something then. Yeah, let me hold something. Yeah, I've known this guy for fucking decades. And he's like, no. And then we've gone around the block with him, and he's ticked some random guy. I was like, all right, cool. Went back to his yard, picked up two in a queue, and said, this is me. Yeah, all right, I picked up his fucking blower, and that person I'd grown up with, yeah, me and him had a scuff in the yard and I took, took his things, in it, And I wish I hadn't done that. Mm. Right, because him and his family were like family to me. Yeah. I've never spoken to him since after that. And yeah, a couple of bits and pieces where, you know, we were all product of our surroundings and I was a bit of a wild kid at the time and I was a bit hyperactive and stuff. Mm. But there's a bigger picture in that. And there's many ways to, there's many ways to die. Yeah, but there's many ways to live also as well. Mm. Yeah, the, like, the opportunities are endless. It's up to you, isn't it? Mm. So, I mean, some people do, carried on with the graffiti thing and they're doing well. Like old Rizzo. Yeah, yeah he's doing well. He's doing yeah. his stuff with, yeah. his, with his graph and that, you know. People doing prints and selling and whatnot. And, yeah, it should still survive because it's part of our, part of our era. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, like... 
you got Van Gogh who paint his pieces yeah. in his era. And these are works of art and people love looking at them. Yeah. Right? And it's, uh, from our era, uh, people may be able to relate to uh, fonts and these certain colours and stuff and, you know, like... 100%. I couldn't agree more. I think there's a correlation between that. Like back in them days with the oil paintings and such, yeah. these people were the outcasts as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, the oil paint itself had certain toxins and fumes that would leave them do lally in the same way that, you know, people... Well, that I mean, old Van Gogh, paint. bless him, you've cut his fucking ear off, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And sent it to, his, get, sent it to a woman. <laughs> 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 got to be a bit do lally for that. I don't know what she's going to do with his ear, but fucking... But they then get heralded as, like, these iconic uh, people and, and pieces that, that then go into, like, Bonhams and Sotheby's and the such, and it's like, that could... That's easily transferable for the amount of decades that Graf has been going, right? Yeah. I mean, look, I think he was a poor guy as well. Yeah, he was, yeah. They all were. Every yeah. single one of them. They only, got, they only made money when they died. <laughs> <right? laughs> How's that work, you know? But, yeah, people get celebrated as, uh, as heroes when, at the time, they were under. So I think there's a case for it. I really do. Future. You ever thought about doing uh, any canvases or anything from your end? Um... Because there'd be I'm, plenty of people out there that would be uh, chewing it a bit. Maybe, maybe, maybe. When I'll get a, when I'll get a moment and that, it's just uh, my mindset, you know, like I used to be in a certain mindset to do certain milestones and shit like that, you know, yeah. and stuff. Well, I wouldn't mind, you know. Yeah. That'd be sick. We need some of that in our lives. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much for joining us, brother. I mean, what an absolute fucking pleasure. What an insight. Oh, pleasure is mine. In depth well, analysis is this, is this right here. Um, Zelda in the place. Any shout outs? Anyone you want to give a shout out to? Oh, loads of people. Free up Nexty, man. Nexty's been in the bin for too long. But everyone I love, all those people, you know, fucking some writers on that. Reese, Touch, you know, a few guys. Spo. Yeah. All them guys, they're good guys, man. You should have them guys on here. I don't know if you've had Touch on here ever. No, not yet. Does anyone know who he is? Don't know who he is, no. yeah. I'm trying to find him. I'm trying to so, catch you know, him. We should get him on here, man. Yeah, one of them, he's got stories he, he to tell. He some good stories. Incredible. Old SB stories and yeah, that. Yeah, believe that. Believe that. More I mean, there's come. a few people who's unfortunately you can't have them on here, like Hate. Yeah, you yeah. Know, remember the writer, Hate? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Hate, Hate, Hate. Yeah. yeah. Or George King, man, rest in peace. Rest in peace, yeah. yeah. OG. Killer Killer Podcast, I like that. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Another one. Uh from another time and another era. Sharing is caring, you know what it is. All right, don't talk to him and I wouldn't. Of course, crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right? <laughs> <Not> again. <laughs> <laughs> you be lucky, people. Peace. <laughs> Woo! That was